Hello everybody, welcome back. We've got the final nine holes of the 2019 Ed Hedrick Disc Golf Hall of Fame Classic here at W.R. Jackson in Appling, Georgia. I am Conrad, side by side with Felix. And we're going to be speaking over the action today. Hopefully this round will actually sound a little bit more exciting than the first round because we're actually awake. So once again, Rectech Grills is your presenting sponsor for this event. This is the PDGA National Tour event, the last stop of the National Tour for the PDGA 2019. And what a way to finish it out than here at the Disc Golf Hall of Fame at the IBGC. All right, we have Chris Dickerson with Prodigy Disc. We have Simon Lazat with Disc Mania. We have Joel Friedman with Innova Champion Disc. And Nicola Castro. So as we go into the back down, we see that uh, Adam and Calvin are tied at uh, 24 under. Johnny is 18 and James is 17 under on the lead card. And we've got Chris and Simon making a big push at 19 down, finishing the front nine. So let's see what kind of fireworks are in store here on the back nine as these guys make a push on the lead card. All right, for hole 10, we have it coming in as a par four playing at 606 feet. Uh, this is a sloping turn uh, to the right here. This is the ideal landing area. Well, I say that for amateurs, probably a little bit further up for these pros here, but it is definitely a birdable, birdie-able hole. I think I said it right. That's a real word. Yeah, I made it. Um, it's birdable, but it's still challenging. We'll see how the players actually work out hole number 10 here at WR Jackson. I think you can say challenging just about on every hole at W.R. Jackson. There's one give me. Okay. <laughs> I don't know where it is, but. Simon going forehand off the tee. That's low and straight. Oh, straight into a tree. Too straight. Yep. <laughs> Again, this is a game of inches. It's left or right, and that right there would have been a different uh, result. Joel also lining up the forehand, which is usually the popular play here. This looks pretty good. Maybe a little stable off the out of the hand there. It finishes yeah. uh, just a little bit off the fairway. I think he should be able to fight his way up and down there. I think that probably broke out a little bit uh, sooner than he ideally wanted. Chris is going with a flippy. I believe this is an F5. And he is carving oh, up this that. turn. Yeah, that's where I'm talking about the pros getting. That's a fantastic shot there by Chris to start the back nine exactly where you want to be. Nico also looking to go that turnover line with that slight ante line. Oh, he's asking for it to keep turning. Oh. Oh, that's unfortunate kick, too. That wouldn't have been as bad if it had just stayed out in the fairway. Yeah, or even got kicked down to the right. Um, the left side is a whole lot trickier than the right side as far as scrambling. Simon's got this turnover a little bit too much, and he's going to be in that. There's a little ditcher in that area that kind of just loves to swallow up different discs. Nico's in there somewhere. Let's see uh, how he manages to get out. Four four oh. hits, a, hits a late tree, but that was an awesome uh, progress down the fairway. Joel here, like we said, he's just slightly off the fairway, but again, you see just trees everywhere. Oh. Branch kicking so he, down. The branch kicked him down, but he still made a lot of forward progress. I mean, he's, he's back in putting range from hitting that uh, that branch so early. Nico here. Again with that A2, we've, we've seen him use this on forehand approaches. He seems to be really comfortable with that A2 in his hand. Oh, yeah. Great approach shot. What a good disc. I agree. <laughs> That's the Prodigy team behind Nico saying, what a good disc as he's throwing an A2, which is a Prodigy disc. <laughs> Speaking of Prodigy. Nice shot nice there. Chris. Now he just showed you how to play this hole. That's the way you, you play the hole. Simon here, 70-ish, oh, 80-ish. <laughs> a lot he's of work. There, yeah. Gives us a run. Oh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Watch that again from the other angle. He just puts the right amount of everything on it as far as turn, loft, and speed. Just comes right into the basket. Lands in so nicely, too. 
about halfway through the flight, he's saying one time, one time. <laughs> he got it. Joe here with a putt outside the circle. Oh, wow. Oh, he didn't like it out of his hand. But there he goes. He cleans that up. Maybe just to clean it up, Joel's had a couple of missteps on the putting green, which is kind of uncharacteristic for him. All right. Textbook. Chris, of course, just dead center. Never a doubt. Picks up another birdie. Keeping that hot streak going. All right, so Joel and LaCastro... Um, finish out that with a bogey but now we're moving on to hole 11. Is that a par? Is that a par 4 that we just played? Oh it is a par 4. It is a par 4. <laughs> hole 11 is a par 3 however. This is a big turnover line here. There is a bit of a forehand line if you want to take that also but it's a 420 foot shot and ideally you want to get something high up in the air just past this little branch that we're flying by now which loves to knock down your shots. Says Johnny. Okay. Yeah. Johnny McGregor will tell you all about that. Just get it past these last couple of guardian trees here to give yourself a nice look for a birdie. A tough hole to get because of the angle and the distance. Let's see what these pros can do with it. Uh, I heard a lot of pros saying that uh, no one on the car was even getting to the green off the tee. Hmm. Simon, turn that one over. Looks like that's a good position play. Matt Dollar actually aced this hole earlier today. Yeah, just a few cards ahead of ours. Dickerson going F5 again off of this tee, the same disc that he carved up the previous hole with. That's nice height, turning to the right. Starting to fade out. <laughs> yes. This, it was so weird. It went in and I heard nothing. There was absolutely silence. Just like... But... When you look at it again, it's coming in at like putter speed. It's not even, it didn't bang the change, it just went in. Yeah, until Conrad radioed me out the tee pad, we had no idea that this was an ace. Second one Dude, today. that was an ace. That was an ace. <laughs> and there he is radioing me at the tee. And the delay reaction. I see the actual actually on the tee now. That was an ace. What? Joe was ready was to throw. Ace. What? <laughs> what a terrible job by the cameraman not getting over and getting Chris's reaction. Fire that man immediately. I can't. He's half of my team. <laughs> so Joel's got the uh, misfortune having to follow that up. Well, you say misfortune, but he knows what line to take. Oh, this looks good. Oh, that branch. <laughs> that branch. That looked like an even cleaner line than what Chris took. We thought it that did. was legitimately going to be a second ace. He did. Nico going a little oh. lower, a little tighter. And he's able to find a hollow tree out there. That did have a weird sound to it when it hit. That's odd. So if you want to ace this hole, you know what to do. It's just you throw a, a F5 and B Dickerson. Those are the two things you got to do. <laughs> you can also be Mad Dollar and throw, a, I believe, a Photon to get his ace. Vision Photon, I think it was. I believe so. Yeah. Great. What a just a remarkable ace. This eight, this hole had never been aced yet. This is one of the newer holes, and it gets aced twice, twice in like the, same the same day. Hour. Yeah. Literally about 30 minutes apart. Get it. Very nice up there by Nico. He's really giving that a run. So Simon did end up in fantastic position here. He's got to look for the bird. Yeah. And he gets it. Dead center. He's just got one of the prettiest spin putts out there. Just a very confident stroke. Uh, again, Joe didn't like it out of his hand. Again, just, uh, just some struggles there for Joe. It just seems to be a little bit off at this point. Nico with a nice par save. Joel here trying to avoid the dreaded birdie to bogey. All right, and he saves the par. 
So there's that one next to Chris's name for the ace. I think that's what that, that grin on his face is from. It looks like he, he knows he hit ace right there. Absolutely. So that puts Chris now down 22 under par. All right, we have hole 12 coming in at, is a par five coming in at 990. Now off the tee, there's uh, two fairways. One is a dummy one, don't take it. Uh, then it splits into another two fairways. Uh, so really, once you get to the ideal landing spot, you have a choice of going straight at the pin or taking the hazard route around. Which is gonna add a little bit of distance, but with some of these players, that really wouldn't uh, be a deterrent. And you get to the green area here, just a few trees in the way and a little ditch. Uh, we actually do have a wall set up. I say we, not us, but uh, there's a wall set up uh, on this hole for this tournament. Chris has flipped that one a little bit over to the right-hand side. Yeah, it's, it's a little short, but it stays in a fairway, so that's good. Simon eyeing something up. Right down the middle. Oh. Uh, like two straight and kicked over to the left side of the fairway still in the fairway though Simon was thinking Eagle off the tee and when they hit that tree he's like that was so close to being so perfect hey I said that about all my shots <laughs> that's why we play intermediate oh, oh. same tree for Joel so that tree yeah. is perfectly placed there to knock out shots midair Nico, uh, asking for it to stay flat, and almost, but he, he kicked over it at the later end of the uh, the hazard there. He should be able to fight his way out of there, and thankfully he's not going to be, it doesn't look like he'll be too obstructed. Looks like he's eyeing the middle, the straight route. Oh. It's actually not a terrible kick. He's going to have options there to play either side. Most likely he'll go up the left side at that point. Simon's looking like he's taking a long route. Looks a little oh. wide again, yeah. That, that leaning tree. Yeah, there's just a some, game of inches, really. Just really a game of inches. Yeah, there's just some, some perfectly placed trees out here just to do enough damage. Joel gets out to a very good spot. Joel actually banged his hand on the tree throwing that shot out. So when I went over to him and asked him, he's like, yeah, I didn't even think about that in my backswing, but he did hit his hand. Yeah, Nico's not as um, obstructed as some of the other players. He's taking a longer route too. I think he uh, came up a little short, ended up in the, in the rough there. Yeah, that this just got a little stable on him a little quicker than he wanted. Chris going up the gut here on the left side. Yeah, this is the straight play. This at F5 again. Just, he is carving up some beautiful lines on this course with that disc. Everybody go out and get yourself an F5 and 400G plastic, and you'll be just as good as Chris Dickerson. Yeah. You're welcome, Prodigy. Ching, pay us now. Um, Simon. Right side, leaking a little bit. Oh. What a, whoa, that was a big kick out to the left. Look like you got a look like a bunt. <laughs> Joel going way over the top here. And a very nice approach out into the green area. That Probably is circle too. That's a tough shot. Yeah, and that that was especially the angle that he had to uh, attack. And the power you have to have to keep it that high, something that stable. Nico coming out here on a forehand. Oh wow! It looked like it was going in. Great shot from back there. Simon down on the knee. Trying to get a roller out here. Gets it out. It curls up a little early. Yeah. Still leaves him with a Simon, Simon range putt, though. He banged home a 70-plus footer, so that one is definitely doable. Stepper for Chris. Oh, just short. Wow. Great pitch. Just short. Great line and everything. See if Joel is shaking off those jitters. Good height. Oh, wow. yeah. Great putt. Run it down, Joel. Great putt. See what Simon has here. Oh. It looked like it came out of his hand just a little, a little weird. Yeah, Simon was not happy about that one. 
Yeah. Nico cleaning up. Yeah. Hear Joel in the background talking about how good it felt to knock one in from a long range there. Simon throwing the mini down in disgust. He's not happy about the score on that hole, but that is a rough hole. It's 990 feet. Travel up the uh, whole way down. So that kind of bumps Simon a little bit down there. He's back down to 20 on the line. Dickerson maintains the 22. So hole 13 is a par 3, 399 feet. Shot is going straight up the gut here. And you're going to have a slight turn towards the end here. So the preferred route is usually a forehand, a righty forehand. You'll see some right-handed players take the backhand line. If you're a lefty player, you're definitely cheating on this hole as you can throw a hyzer. But the pros usually kind of feast on this hole. It's a good way to get a birdie moving into the back stretch here. Yeah, this is the gimme hole I was talking about. Oh, this is the one. <laughs> Joel going forehand here off the tee. Good commitment. That was good, yeah. Maybe a little early. A little early, but he made it through. Oh, yeah, he's in position. Very nice shot. Thought that might have been a little high and faded on him, but... Nico good shot. Is here. Nico going wider with a little bit more Annie on it. Well, you, you expect this disc to be a little bit more stable, so. Yeah, yeah. So two for two here. Both guys in the circle, it looks like. Dickerson trying to join the party. This looks very good. Very straight. Starting to fade. Whoa. Misses the last skinny tree. Wow. A couple of trees they're getting up there, but that's a great shot. Chris doesn't get enough credit. He's got a very good forehand game as well. And Simon. This might be the best of the bunch. Centered. Finishes a little right. But all these guys are in position to pick up that too that they're all looking for on this hole. Simon up first. That one came out right. Yeah. Hammers that one in. Nico. Mm. A little short gauge. There's slight elevation as you can see on this, which can throw off your putt a little bit. Joel trying to cash in the two here. There you go. Yeah. He's got those putting gears out. Chris to continue on this hot streak here. Yep, 23 down now. I mean, the lead card has to be hearing footsteps at this point because Dickerson is charging. Nico not thrilled about his play on that hole. Still got the par. I didn't realize the size gallery we actually had. Yeah, it kind of grew as we picked up, especially heading into 14. So Dickerson and Simon and Joel Freeman with birdies on that particular hole. Simon now at 21. Dickerson at 23 down, heading into 14. Coming in hole 14, this is a par 5, uh, 837 feet. Uh, I guess the drone footage threw me off because you really got to come down a, a narrow um, tunnel before you turn left to get into an ideal um, landing area. Uh, once you get up to that landing area, the typical play is either going to be a turnover or a forehand to actually get to the green. And this is a pretty open green by uh, ejection standards. So you can see the hallway the comrade's talking about is just a straight shot all the way through. Joel's Joel. pulled this right and he gets a wow, look at that amazing what? tree kick. Look at that low. <laughs> right in the middle. <laughs> Chris here. He knows at this point that he's making a big time charge at the lead. And he smokes this That's up the middle. Straight down the middle. Yeah, yeah. 
No nerves, no pressure, just delivering quality shots. Simon wants that to turn, and it doesn't. This is one of those holes that you, you have a backup and it kind of throws you out of rhythm. You go with Nico that force flex? I think we should just call that the Nico shot. I mean. <laughs> Good result there for Nico. He's going to like that. Simon trying to fight his way back up to the fairway. There was a roller there. It came out. And as it kept going, I'm like, is it going to lose momentum? But it just kept going and going. I didn't realize he got that far up off that roller. I just yeah. off the, the player A cam. I just I couldn't tell. That was actually a very good shot. I sound surprised. It's Simon. He always, <laughs> he always throws great shots. Joe, let's see what he does with this prime position. Um, forehand. forehand is in early. There's a lot of skinny trees and obstructions and vines in there that will easily knock down your disc quickly. Yeah. Sometimes you talk about what's the good hole, good side of the hole to be in and a bad side. Sometimes that doesn't apply, apply to Jackson. Oh. Chris wasn't trying to throw the roller there. Um, he just had a, a bad release. Just kind of led to the accidental thrower, and it puts him in that right side, not too far behind where Joel is. I think it was a little more pinched than I thought here. Oh, oh. no. Oh, no. I thought Nico was in just just in the prime area, but he I guess he was trying to cut the corner a little bit tight to to work his flex. This looks like a good angle on this forehand. Oh, yeah. You know that disc is stable. Wait, wait, it's coming toward me. Oh. All right. Nice job getting out of the way of that one. Some fancy footwork being a uh, catch cam. <laughs> Simon going with a much higher angle on his forehand. Oh, but it's that it hits the first tree is old in the, in the fairway. But at least it, it knocked him straight down. And here's the is vines it? and the skinny trees yeah. we we're talking about in here. Yeah. There's just so much that can go wrong. Yeah. Definitely the, the worst side to be in of the of the two on this one. Joel sees a window. Oh, mm. Yeah, this W.R. Jackson has Chris here with that orange putter. That was a great shot, even with a, a little kiss from the tree still uh, in putting range. Simon, long look here. Oh, and I think he wants it. A little Annie out of the hands, oh, not, not enough. enough. Joel's still fighting his way through here. He just made this the front edge of this uh, place we call jail. As you can see, the gallery is growing up. Once you get to hole 14, that's where a lot of the players and the spectators are. Right up. In the pavilion area, so they just started coming along for the ride. Nico with a long look here. You know, no. uh, oh. He knew it. Chris here. Ooh, little right hand side, but he sticks the landing. Nico with a little clean up. That's what I saw all day at the uh, practice baskets. I don't think I've ever seen anybody practice putt as much as Nico. As much and as long. Yeah, like, I mean. You know, people say it, like we're saying it now, but you really just don't believe it until you actually see it. I mean, he was out there for well over an hour after the round, still throwing in putts from everywhere. So we see a stable of fives on that hole, and that's, if you can get a four on that hole, you're usually getting strokes on the field. So, hole 15.
comes in at 714 feet. This is a par four. It's a bit of a downhill slope to start off the tee and then it kind of flattens its way back up. The ideal landing area is where we're flying over now. That's gonna give you a couple of different options. They're all tight though to get down to where your second landing area is, which is close by the green. And this starts to slope down, so a lot of the players will kind of lay up a little bit short of this basket and take their chances at the putt. But you can see there is a creek right behind it, which is not playing as OB today, it is casual. It's actually dry. Yes, Nothing that's true. In it. Not a lot of rain over the last couple of weeks. Joel still on the tee here. He's throwing that nice forehand line, trying to get to that landing zone. And executes. Center cut. Perfect placement. Great shot there by Joel. Now for me, the second half of this hole is all, it's just a guaranteed scramble. Even if you're in ideal position, it's still going to be a scramble to get down to the basket cleanly. This is piped by Chris. That came through the trees and... Skips right up, just yeah. a little bit ahead of Joel. Very nice placement. Both of these tee shots are in prime position. Simon, mm. turn. Oh, he, he went a little long. I don't know if he was trying to take the, the back gap or. I think it just came out a little wide on him. Nico. That's stable enough. That's a great angle. What do you mean? Is it, it's Nico's disc. Of course it's stable enough. <laughs> great shot. So Simon's going to have some work to do, and he's going to be in scramble mode, which is unfortunately a. Oh. Uh, Simon's not understanding how that's possible. It's disc golf. I'm glad to know that I'm not the only one that says these things. Nico in position here. Second shot on the way. Cruising towards the green. So that was an awesome shot. Wow. Um, 10 for 10 for scrambling. That right there was not an easy shot to execute. I don't know if you saw how many trees it went by. Uh, All of first them. First half of the flight. That one fades out a little early on Simon. Let's see what Joel can work out here on his second shot. Again, this is about as ideal as you can be off of the tee. Yep. Like I said, it's still a scramble. Yeah, Joel said it there, you gotta focus. Every shot out here is not a gimme. Even if you're in position, you still gotta execute shot after shot. Chris with a subtle, gentle turnover. Oh, wow. He scared the tower. Chris is just, he's playing next level golf right now. Joe fighting his way through. Finds a way through and down to the green. That's one of those gators again. Again, Joel bags a couple gators and he's doing some magic with them on this course. Simon, again, well outside of circle one, in a ditch. In a ditch. Obstructed underneath the basket, height wise. Oh, he rings it up. It's, it's strange. I recorded this, but I forget these shots. That was awesome. Not only did it ring it up, it was dead center. Oh, my God. Oh. Nico again, a little bit short, short. off the cage there. Joel p puts that away. Saving the par there. Good job by Joel. Not letting that bad shot get to him. And Chris here with a chance for yet another birdie. Yeah. And he rings it up. He's on a heater. At this point, Chris can see the finish line. He knows what he has to do. It's just a matter of executing the shots down the stretch. And so far, he is executing those shots. 24 down right now for Chris Dickerson. Hole 16 is a short par three. It's one of the newer holes here at the IDGC. Ideally, it's either gonna be a turnover or a forehand. I think the turnover has a better line than the forehand does. Uh, but again, this is a, a intermediate player talking, so I don't know much. The screen is also quite tricky. As you can see, there's a lot of slope. There's also that OB 
creek on the right hand side with the ropes. So just because you get it there doesn't mean it's going to stick. Well, actually, this OB has it all around the hole. This here in the beginning. And then right behind Chris where well, Chris there. just landed is also OB. Chris is able to stick the landing there. He's going to be a circle two putt there. Mm. Joel missed his Out of the line. hand, he knew. And that's creeping towards that OB line. And you can see the white flags there. <laughs> Thinks he's safe. We'll see. Simon putter in hand. Nice gentle turnover. Like I said, the turnover line is the one. Lands flat. Beautiful touch and execution there by Simon. Nico working mm -hmm. this. Wow. Is, is this going to be long? No, it's turning right. And it slides down that right side. It looks like he's got no beat. Joel just, just safe. That was just a hard shot to execute, Joel. Tricky footings. You can see Joel's here is just trying to maintain his balance on this upshot. It's a tree, starts to roll, oh. but it, it okay. curls up. Again, there's OB all around the green. Well, not the green, but the, and some of it is um, wet. It's actually roped off, so all of it's OB, but. Nico went OB, um, throwing up here. That's a great That's shot a great there. Shot. Limit the damage. Chris here again, looking to execute. Yeah. Yes. Yes. This man is on the tear. 14, 15, 16. That's the turkey right there for Mr. Dickerson. Oh. Sucking your job, dude. Joel being a little hard on himself <laughs> there, but we've all had those moments. Very nice two there for Simon. Simon kind of riding the ship here as we, we come down the home stretch. And Nico dropping it in. Just a rough hole there for Nico and Joel. Simon and Chris getting the birdies. Putting Simon down at 22 under par. Chris now at 25 under par, heading into 17. So 17 has a lot of names. The Cathedral Hole, it seems to be what a lot of people call it. This is a tight shot off the tee. Trees on the left and right, and then it starts to slope on up. Your ideal landing area will usually be just as that slope starts to creep up. If you, if you can get to the top of the hill, you'll have a look down for a possible birdie. Second shot is also guarded by trees on the left and right, and then there's a sloping green that works its way away from the basket. This is I, usually one of the toughest holes on the course in terms of par. Chris, looking to continue the streak here. You can see the gap that you have to hear off the tee. And that is big time trouble. Chris is actually, I believe at this point, he has tied for the lead. So that is a costly mistake. Simon, Simon. is going up the left side. He's going to miss everything, which I don't, I don't know. I don't know how he did it. I saw it, and I still I was waiting to, to move the camera somewhere else, but he just kept coming. Nico here eyeing the gap. Gets to the first part clean. Oh. Up the gut. Beautiful turn. There you go. Nice fade. And right to the cameraman once again. I don't remember upsetting Nico, but he kept keeps throwing at me. Joel. Oh, Joel wanted that to flip, but it's not. But oddly enough, he found another clear path mostly through there. It's almost at the top. So Chris trying to now, at this point he's trying to play for a par, trying to get to that top of the hill. This looks a little early as well. Yep. So now he's got this left to try to still get to the top of that hill to give himself a look down at the green. 
as you can see, this hole doesn't let up. 17, if you're off the fairway, is a beast. He lands it up towards the top of the hill there. Simon with a look here. He has a gap to go through. This is the advantage of actually making it all the way to the top. And again, hits the early tree on the right-hand side. Joel misses the last tree he has to beat. That's a very good shot. Right. So Simon again was going through the options here. Didn't like really any shot. He's, he's going to try a roller. Oh, good angle. And that finishes the left. Just too much angle on that out of his hand. Nico here. Finally, we're getting to Nico's second shot. I believe that's the Cenus, right? I think so. This looks perfect. Settle down. That'll do. That'll do. So a little, little meat on there, but... Um, yeah, he's got that. So if you're looking for the blueprint on how to birdie 17, that's pretty much it there. Chris here again. Touchy shot. Floats it through a like very tight gap. And got some root love there for that uh, headbanger. The banger's head when he picks up that disc. So Chris again able to kind of slow it down. He knows he has to execute each and every shot at this point. Oh, that's money. That's a good ball. Well played. Yeah, Simon is... Uh, I think he's looking forward to this round being over right at this point. Still got some uh, work to do here to clean this up. That's Simon Range. Yes, sir. Strong side, too. You go for the birdie here. Bam, he puts it away. Dead center. It's Paige Pierce walking in the background there. Let's see if Joel can put this one away, and he does. Nicely done by Joel. So hole 17, a couple of pars. Dickerson's still in the race, 24 under. All right, this is hole 18, the finisher. It's a par five, 726 feet. This upslope is, uh, it kind of gets you when you're, you're driving because uh, it's difficult to land on. Uh, sometimes it slides stuff to the right, but if you can get it where you want it, your second shot will be looking at this gap where you can come through and actually approach towards the green. Only one, one real tree on the uh, approach is a guardian. And now we have Nico up. Looking good, like it's going down the center. Uh, it, that the only ends thing, up. Only thing you can say about it, it didn't go OB. There is OB over there too, so yeah. it didn't go that far back. He's right by 17's basket on the steady head course there. Yeah. Let's see what Joel has here. Right up the gut. Right up missed, the gut. That looks missed good. That missed, tree. Yep. Center. those. Settle. Uh, might be uh, a little obstructed. Yeah, it was a good drive. A little uh, unfair about where he ended up. So the pressure's on here. Chris knows, realistically, he needs a birdie to be in contention for the lead. So as he's uh, preparing to throw here, um, Kevin Jones and Drew behind me saying, oh, he, just, he just needs a birdie. Don't think that Chris didn't know that. He knew that. Simon, Simon, this needs to get over. How do you get through? Wow, and a great kick back to the middle. After doing some breakdance moves on the tee. This is such a, a tough run up too that Zico's, uh, Nico's got. Hmm. And again, it's that early tree puts him right back nearly to 
same spot he just threw from. But it opened up a little bit of an alley more for a forehand here. Hi, right, turnover. Very nice touch there by Nico. Dickerson again. In the woods. Going high roller angle, trying to get this back over, working to the right, and it just catches roots and kind of settles in. And the rough on the left. On the left, the left is the good side of the rough here. Simon with a roller. Man, his, his rollers just have so much steam. Everything he throws has so much steam. Chris has is eyeing that tight gap that you see between between those two trees straight ahead. And he pipes it. Wow. This is one of the best shots you'll ever see from there. Paige Pierce was in the background behind me and she was losing her mind as she was watching that shot go. Nico again oh. hits a tree and gets that's about as bad a kick as you can get from that yeah, tree. Yeah. The trees are not being uh, kind to Nico on this hole for sure. Oh, that's uh, excellent. Out of his hand, he knew. And that's over on the right hand side, also. Again, that, that section of Jackson there, well, really any section of Jackson off the fairway is just. it's brutal. He did push forward enough that he should have a easier out. Simon having to hug a tree after throwing that shot to stop his balance. Still definitely in Simon range. Nico's stance here is just so very awkward, but he executes that <laughs> shot it just <worked>. perfectly. <laughs> So Joel here still with plenty of work to do on the right-hand side, rough here. Try to get around these Georgia Pines. He did push forward enough that... Got to look up top. Oh, yep, up top he comes and... That's a I really good shot. You can see from back there where he was as opposed to the pin there. That's a tough angle. So Chris needs this for the birdie and to put himself into the tie for first. And you can see the reaction. Simon knows it. Chris knows it. Just high off the band, committed to it. It was slight downhill, so there's a few more factors you have to take into consideration when you're going Joel for a like it. that. Simon cleans up his. Nico cleaning it up to finish out the round in the tournament. And Chris Dickerson puts it in, gets a nice ovation from the gallery. Chris yep. fought his way from a five stroke deficit to push the leader. And at one point was tied yep. for the lead. So at this point, we were just sitting there waiting to see what the, uh, the lead card uh, came in with. And uh, there was still a chance for Dickerson to end up in the playoff. But we see that Calvin took down the playoff uh, against Adam. Uh, Dickerson came in third, Johnny in fourth, Simon uh, in fifth, Double G. I can't say that name. Vino Makira. There you go. <laughs> so thanks everybody for watching the chase card of the 2019 Hall of Fame Disc Golf Classic. We are Ace Run Productions. Please make sure to like, share, subscribe, leave us some comments, let us know what you thought about the coverage. We love doing what we do, and we appreciate the PDGA having us out for this event. Thank you to everybody. Thank, Thank you to our card. That was uh, they were very, very friendly. Absolutely. Stay tuned for more coverage coming from this event. We've got Legends and the MP55 coming soon. So let's get excited for some disc golf.